the Bolzano Waste to Energy Plant, a state-of-the-art facility. EcoCenter has been running the Bolzano Waste to Energy Plant, which treats all waste in South Tyrol since 2014. It has more than 100 members, and all of them are public bodies. Ciao! Hi, I'm Alex, and I work at EcoCenter. Today I'm going to drive the garbage truck for you to show you what happens to your waste. Let's start from the beginning. This bag, it doesn't smell good at all, is not waste, but pure energy. First of all, congratulations! The separate collection rate in South Tyrol is very high. Because you take sorting seriously, you only put non-recyclable and non-recoverable material into the waste bin. But don't forget that the best way to reduce waste is not to produce it in the first place. And you are doing just great! What's more, we get very homogeneous waste. Homogeneous waste burns well and transforms more easily into energy. So let's move on and take a look at some important information. Organic waste, clothing, household appliances, glass, aluminium, paper, cardboard, plastic packaging and batteries should never be thrown in the residual waste bag, just as paint residues, thinners and medicines must never be thrown away. Everything clear? Now let's see what you throw into the garbage bag. Hmm. Dirty plastic packaging? That's fine. Plastic cutterly. Very good! And all oh, toothpaste tubes and toothbrushes. Great! But let's see what we have here. Wood. Paper, cardboard. A bag of correctly separated residual waste produces 1.7 liters of fuel, or 17 kilowatt hour of energy. And with this energy, you can use an 8 watt energy saving light bulb for three months, or watch TV for five days. If, unlike me, you can find something interesting enough to keep you glued to the TV screen for five days in a row. Out of sight, out of mind? Well, that's not how it works. We need to be conscientious and committed. You do your part well and so do we. Come on Giovanni, let's go and dump our waste in the waste to energy plant bunker. Fire and flames. The Bolzano Waste to Energy Plant processes 400 tons of residual waste every day. That's an average of 50 trucks. In a week, they would fill a football pitch up to one meter in height. Two thirds of our waste comes from private households and one third from industry and crafts. This is the weighing station. Here we check vehicles, manufacturers and transporters. And we also check if there is any radioactivity in the waste. If everything is okay, we can weigh the truck and go dump the waste in the bunker. Let's go! There is no need to sort if at the waste to energy plant the waste is being separated and shredded. Ready to read that? On a chocolate wrapper? It's fake news! Absolutely wrong! The residual waste that you produce is being dumped in the waste bunker as it is. That's why it's very important that you separate the waste at home so that as much as possible can be recycled. If you don't know how to do it properly, just ask your local municipality. Every citizen is part of the waste treatment system and makes it efficient and ecological. There are no excuses. Now, have a look while I go to meet the crane operator. The waste is discharged into the storage bunker. The spider machine mixes it to get a homogeneous waste and therefore an efficient fuel. The crane operator continuously feeds the furnace by loading the waste into the hopper.
In the combustion chamber, the waste slips slowly down onto the grate and burns in a controlled manner at a temperature of 900 to 1000 degrees. Once it is burnt, the residual waste automatically leaves the furnace and falls into the ash extractor. The furnace consists of the combustion chamber equipped with a four-track air-cooled step grate with retrograde movement. Visitors like to watch the fire and often ask us if we need to add gas or diesel to make the waste burn. To answer this question, we need to move to the control room. Fire and flames. Giovanni, it's your turn. But are you all called Giovanni in here? The control room is actually the brain of the plant. It manages and controls all the processes very carefully. Various programs with exotic names such as DCS and MICC manage the waste to energy plant automatically, based on the settings of the supervisor. Various cameras ensure continuous monitoring of important parts of the system. To come back to your question, once it starts, combustion is self-powered and produces a large amount of heat. By continuously loading waste, you don't need to use any other fuel. Fire and flames. Fire and flames. Now that we have mixed the waste in the bunker and incinerated it, what do we get? By burning waste, you basically get three products. Heat, combustion gases and combustion residues. The Bolzano Waste to Energy plant recovers this heat and turns it into energy. Did you know that? You already knew that? I'll give you a fascinating technical explanation anyway. The heat produced by combustion heats the water which circulates in the boiler and transforms it into steam, 400 degrees Celsius, 40 bar. This steam is sent to a turbine which produces electricity. Some of the steam is used to heat the water in the Bolzano district heating system. The maximum electric power generated by the plant is 50 megawatt. It could light up 20,000 houses or the entire city of Bresanone. The maximum heat output recovered is 32 megawatt. Currently, 4,300 households and businesses receive heat from the district heating system. The future expansion of the network will enable the heating of 10,000 homes and numerous public buildings. Due to its high energy efficiency of over 65%, the Bolzano Waste to Energy plant is classified as an energy recovery plant. Out of breath after this explanation, whew, a top facility, as young people say. Fire and flames. The boiler has two sections, the region part and the convective part. The region part, where we are now, has three completely empty vertical chambers where heat is transmitted by radiation. In the convective part, filled with tube bundles, the heat is transmitted by convection. In this way, all the heat from the fumes is used to generate steam and at the same time, the fumes cool down before being purified. The boiler must always be clean. Let me explain how it's done. The walls in radiant zone 2 and 3 are cleaned of ash deposits. As you can see, a proboscis with a metal head with nozzles at the end is inserted from top to bottom. Once in position, water is sprayed onto the walls, cleaning them from the ash. The tube bundles in the convective area are cleaned with pneumatic hammers. As you can see, a trolley equipped with a firing pin moves automatically on a rail and is positioned on the hammer. Once hit, it vibrates the tube bundle, causing the ashes to detach. The ashes fall onto belts, which are then transported to the storage silos. Burning waste produces flue gases, which have to be purified. Now let's look at the details of the process. The fumes produced by waste combustion pass through two back filters. In the first filter, by dosing charcoal and lime, Initial dedusting and removal of acids, heavy metals and dioxins take place. In the second filter, by dosing charcoal and sodium bicarbonate, further purification happens. 
The final gases have residual levels which are well below the legal limits. But how does a back filter work? Fumes passing through the filters deposit dust on the outer surface of the sleeves. An air washing system shakes the sleeves, causing the dust to fall on belts that transport it to the storage silos. During the last purification step, the Denox catalyst comes into play, which decomposes the nitrogen oxidase into harmless gases, nitrogen and steam. The tower behind me contains all this honeycomb material. Basically, you can say it works like a catalyst of your car. Fast and furious. The solid residue of the waste combustion is called slag. A magnet separates any ferrous metals from the slag, which is then sent for recycling. Some of you will be asking, but why do I have to collect metals like bean tins, cans and so on and so on separately if they are picked out and removed from the waste to energy plant anyway? Weren't you wondering about that? No worries, I'll explain it anyhow. In the furnace, ferrous material is degraded by the flames and dirted by the slag, making it less valuable for recycling and potentially creating problems at the grate. Remember, all materials that resist the temperature of the furnace about 900,000 degrees but aren't picked up by the magnet, ride piggyback as it were on the other solid waste residue and come out with the slag. Other materials, such as aluminium, melt and require further treatment before they can be recovered. So this material should not be thrown into the garbage bag. Glass, for example, melts at 1600 degrees and unlike iron, it's not separated after incineration. That means that every piece of glass that you throw into the waste bag will end up in the landfill and stay there forever and ever. Couldn't you be more careful? In the province of Bolzano, slag is disposed of in landfills as non-hazardous special waste. It is unearthed material, the same as sand, and does not attract wild animals in search of food at the landfill. Waste incineration reduces the volume of waste enormously and preserves our landfills. After boiler cleaning and combustion gas filtration, the remaining dust is accumulated in two tanks. This dust is sent to recovery plants as hazardous special waste. The Bolzano Waste to Energy plant has a combustion line. During the usual maintenance outages, waste gets pressed and packed in a baler. It will be treated once the plant is back in operation. So, how does a baler work? The crane operator takes the waste from the bunker and deposits it in the press hopper, where it gets pressed and wrapped in film. The bales are then stored in a depot. The plant is equipped with a continuous emission monitoring, CEM, a dioxin sampler, DECS, and a mercury meter. The control body can access the plant's emission data online. The daily values of the main legal parameters are published on the EcoCenter's website. Together we have seen what happens to our waste and how important it is to treat it properly in order to transform it into energy. The Bolzano Waste to Energy plant is a state-of-the-art plant at European level, which makes it possible to do all this with a very low environmental impact, fire and flames.